Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. When is your mind normal? When you've got it set. When you've got your mind made up. I don't know that we can even believe how powerful we are. When we make our minds up to something, when we are determined and we refuse to back off of it. I am telling you that the Word of God has healed my soul. It has renewed my mind. It has healed me physically. The Word of God is like taking a happy pill. Woo, glory. Some of you got happy pills, but I'm telling you what, you got a big happy pill right there. I mean, it's like taking a peace pill, a power pill. But you can't just lay it on your head. Oh boy, I got my Bible underlined. I know this and I know and I know and I know. <laughs> no, you got to take it. You got to meditate on it. You got to chew it up. You got to swallow it. And when you do, there's power in the Word of God to renew your mind and change your life. Hallelujah. Have some think sessions. Sit down and think some things on purpose. Don't just take whatever falls in your head and, oh, I'm stupid, I'm ugly. Never gonna overcome my past. Nothing good ever happens to me. Nobody likes me. I know those people over there are talking about me. Look at how they're looking at me. Mm -hmm. Don't let your mind be the devil's garbage dump. Don't let your mind be the place where he just comes by and throws his trash day after day after day. Say, get out of here. The next time you catch yourself thinking something stupid, just say out loud, that is stupid. <laughs> You're not stupid, but the thought is stupid. The thought that the devil is putting in your mind is stupid. All right, now, when is your mind normal? <laughs> <laughs> What is your mental condition? <laughs> well, You know, this could probably be a four-part series in itself, but let's just see where we get here. Is a confused mind normal? And yet I could have started out today and said, how many of you have been experiencing a lot of confusion? There would have been more hands up than down. The next time you're confused, just say out loud, that's not normal. You say, well, sister, it's normal for me. <laughs> well, yeah, but we're changing that today. <laughs> Amen? That's going to change today. Peaceful is normal. <laughs> Peaceful. Now, you know, and this is the absolute truth. I had such a mess in my mind that when I finally started getting peaceful, and I'm telling you the truth, I was bored. Just bored. And one of my daughters, Sandra, which she would tell this herself, she's been a real perfectionist and just had to really deal with her thoughts. And God's just given her a beautiful breakthrough. And she's just got so much peace now. And she called me one day last week and she said, I need you to talk to me a little bit about that thing where you said you got bored when you got peaceful. She said, I, I keep feeling kind of like I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> And it's true. You can get addicted to turmoil. We can be so addicted to turmoil that if nothing is going on, we'll start something. <laughs> But that's not normal. Peace is normal. <laughs> When you're peaceful, you just might hear from God. 
Worried, frustrated, angry? That's not normal. Well, you know, I'm just a worrier. <laughs> I mean, how silly is that? A passive mind. This is an area that a lot of people don't even know anything about. And a passive mind is just open for the attack of Satan. And a passive person is one who does not do their own thinking and they don't do their own acting. They wait for some outside force to move them. They wait to feel like it. A passive person is filled with wishes. They want something good to happen and they are going to sit right there and see if it does. You're never going to get rid of bad thinking if you don't replace it with good thinking. It's not a matter of just casting down the wrong thought. You have to choose right thoughts. And we have to do that on purpose. Don't have a passive mind. A busy mind. Well, how busy is our mind supposed to be? Let me just throw this out. Some people think too much. <laughs> Good, one person agrees. <laughs> I mean, God had to tell me a number of times in my life, Joyce, you just think too much. You know, you can think a thing to death. You can kill something with your thoughts. I love what King David said. Well, actually, he was just a shepherd when he said this. The Bible says when he came to the battle line to do battle with Goliath, he looked at him and he ran quickly to the battle line. I love that. Let me tell you something. If you stare at Goliath too long, <laughs> you'll get overwhelmed and very convinced that fighting with him is a bad move. We have to learn how to not think a thing to death. Some of you have had dreams and visions in your life and there's been great things that God's put in your heart that could be a possibility for you and you just thought about it too much. You took a look at yourself, well, you know. I mean, I wouldn't be here today if I wouldn't have gotten over that. I don't have the right anything to be doing this. Well, I mean, I do in God, but in the natural... I mean, that's why somebody like me just, just makes people in the world so mad they can't hardly stand it. <laughs> How could somebody like me do something this big and be this successful at it? Because it's God and they don't understand that. They don't understand that. I don't have all the right qualifications do you know that of all of Jesus' disciples and by the way he prayed all night before choosing them makes you wonder <laughs> but out of all of them the only one the world would have approved of would have been Judas <laughs> because he was the educated one the proper one. Don't think your dreams and visions to death. When God called me to do this, I didn't even know women weren't supposed to do it. Somebody told me that a year later. You can't do that. You're a woman. I thought, oh. Wow. You see, I wasn't smart enough to know that women couldn't do this. And so for a while, Dave tried to teach and I tried to shut up and it just didn't work. So I went to God, well, you know, I'm a woman. He said, you think I didn't know that? Don't think your dreams and visions to death. How many of you are with me? I suppose if we thought about it too much, not very many of us would ever do what God wants us to do. You know why? Because a lot of it just doesn't make much sense to your mind. All right, we should have decisive minds. 
We should be able to make decisions. We should not be double-minded going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. Just make a decision. Well, what if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? What if I'm wrong? You'll survive. What if I miss God? What if I miss God? He'll find you. Oh, but we can have a happy mind, a glad mind, a peaceful mind, a thankful mind, a satisfied and a content mind, a patient mind. We can have a mind full of ways to bless other people. Since hearing my teaching this weekend, have any of you gotten up in the morning and purposely thought about what you could do to be a blessing to somebody else? Good, that's about 10% of the crowd. What's the matter with the rest of you? You know what it is? You need to hear that one again. And again, and oh, oh, God was talking to me. Oh. What should be the normal condition of our mind? 1 Corinthians 14, 20. Brethren, do not be children immature in your thinking. Continue to be babes in matters of evil, but in your minds be mature men. Wow. When is my, mar my mind normal? When I'm not thinking like a baby. What about me? What about me? What about me? What about me? No, you missed the robot. I ain't doing it again. <laughs> when is your mind normal? When you've got it set. When you've got your mind made up. I don't know that we can even believe how powerful we are when we make our minds up to something, when we are determined and we refuse to back off of it. No wonder the Apostle Paul said, my determined purpose is to know him and the power of his resurrection. When you say that, you're saying, I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how much effort it takes. I am going to keep at this until I know God personally, the wonders of his person, how marvelous he is, till I know his character. I'm determined to know him. The apostle Paul said in 1 Peter the same thing about resisting the devil. Be determined to resist him at his onset to stand against him, to be steadfast, to press through every attack of the enemy. Be determined. You won't even exercise regularly if you're not determined. Oh, do we have, to, we have to talk about that. Oh, well, sister, I would like to get a little more exercise. I, you know, I think I would feel a little better and not be so stiff, but I just hate it. Well, first of all, you need to stop that. <laughs> you can make your mind up to things. Now, don't throw something at me. You don't have to overeat. <laughs> first of all, get your mind off food. Hey, food's good. I enjoy my food. I'm pretty picky about my food. When I eat it, I want to enjoy it. But you know, I found when I'm busy all day, I don't even get hungry. But you let me sit in the chair at night with nothing else to do. <laughs> think about it, think about it, think about it, think about it. Think about it, think about it, think about it. And probably the more bored you are and the less active you are, the more you want to eat. Come on now. I'm just trying to help you. And I'll tell you another time when I think about food too much, if I let myself get too hungry. Sometimes in an effort to not eat too much, we don't eat enough. And then we end up thinking about food all the time. I've found out if I get really hungry, I'm better off to just eat a little something and then get it off my mind. Make your mind up. 
that you're going to overcome your past. Be determined. Set your mind. I've shared this a few times. I don't know if it's hit TV yet or not, but Dave is a man who really understands the value of setting his mind in a direction. Yay, Dave. Yay, Dave. Amen. And, um, you, know, you, know, you know how much he loves golf. You hear me talk about it all the time. So, you know, he was having a little trouble with his bag, a little trouble with this, a little trouble with that, and that's all better now. But I said to him one day, I said, what, uh, Dave, how are you going to feel about it if you ever get to the point where you can't play golf? And he said, I've already thought about that, and I've already got my mind set. Now listen to this. He said, I've already thought about that, and I've already got my mind set. If that day ever comes, I'll be just as happy not playing as I am playing. Wow. Wow. Well, I don't know what I'm going to do when all my kids leave, and I, I, I don't know what I'm going to do, and I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. Why don't you just make your mind up that it's going to be good? Every season in your life can be good. Just because something changes, the new thing doesn't have to be bad. Have a new mindset. Get a mindset. I'm going to take care of myself. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to learn how to do things the right way. I'm going to be a person of excellence. Make your mind up and stop changing it. A made-up mind. A powerful, powerful thing. A made-up mind. Set your mind and keep it set on things that are above. The Bible says there's a mind of the spirit and the mind of the flesh. The mind of the spirit is thinking with the mind of Christ. Thinking according to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. The mind of the flesh, the Bible says, the Amplified Bible says, is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. Sense and reason without the Holy Spirit. So the mind of the flesh is thinking and looking at things in the natural rather than looking at them with God on your side. I'm sure when Abraham looked at himself and he looked at Sarah and the Bible says that he considered, he considered his body that was 100 years old. He considered her barren womb. And yet the Bible says that no unbelief or doubt made him waver concerning the promise of God because he grew strong as he gave praise and glory to God. He did think about it, but he didn't let the thinking overwhelm him. He didn't think just with sense and reason. He thought with the Holy Spirit. Yes, I'm 100 years old, but God. Yes, I'm lacking education, but God. Yes, I'm limited in this, but God. Yes, I'm the only Christian in my family, but God is with me all the time. We don't have to ignore what we are, but we can think about it with the Holy Spirit. We don't have to think about it without the Holy Spirit. Sense and reason without the Holy Spirit is the mind of the flesh. Woo! My, my, my. The mind of the flesh is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, and it ministers death. And all the miseries that arise from sin. The mind of the Spirit is life and soul peace, both now and forever. That's Romans 8, 4 through 6. Now, there's all kinds of various conditions of the mind, and I have about three minutes left, so here we go. The wandering mind, the mind that just wanders all over the place. We are pitiful. Somebody, you're, and I'm saying a life-changing thing. And somebody over here moves and you're. That's why if I can just get people to be still when I'm preaching, it just is wonderful. Somebody goes to the bathroom, half the crowd goes with them. Then when they come back, the crowd comes back with them. Do you know that if your mind wanders off for two minutes,
that whatever happened during that two minutes, you were totally unaware of it. That's how powerful the mind is. Even though your body is there, so you might say, well, I was there. Well, what did Joyce preach on today? I don't know. <laughs> it was good. I know I enjoyed it. I think one of the things that we struggle with the most is just not being able to keep our mind on anything today because there's so much coming at us. So you could start by trying to keep your mind on what you're doing. A wondering mind, I wonder about this. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. Hmm. I wonder. A doubtful and unbelieving mind, a confused mind, a critical, suspicious mind. Let me ask you a question. Do you really have to give your opinion about everything in the world? I mean, does anybody really care? Well, I think, well, I think, well, I think, well, I think, well, I think. Now, let me just talk for a minute, just, just, just a minute, or maybe two, <laughs> about reasoning. Now, listen, I mean, I literally was addicted to reasoning. I could not settle down until I thought I had everything figured out. The sad thing was, was God had to teach me that even though I thought I had things figured out, I had a lot of stuff in the wrong box. And I can tell you the truth, I've just got so much peace now for many reasons, but one is, is I just don't try to figure stuff out. I mean, I just don't try to figure it out. If God wants to tell me, I'm more than open to learning, but I am not driving myself nuts anymore trying to figure stuff out that only God knows and He's not seeming to want to tell me yet. Now, why did they get healed and I didn't get healed? Why, God, why? When, God, when? Just say, God, if you want me to know, tell me. I'm open to learning. There's something here I need to learn. Teach me. But you, you just need to announce to the devil, I am finished trying to figure things out. Remember back to 2 Corinthians? Arguments, theories, reasonings. We need to cast those things down. Start learning to say, I am not going to try to figure it out. And when people come to you and say, man, I heard about your problem, so what are you going to do? You need to say, I don't know, and I ain't going to try to figure it out. <laughs> now, you know, I'm not suggesting that we all just be dumb. I mean, obviously, you can meditate on something long enough to see if something makes sense or God gives you something. But the moment that you start to feel confused, that's your signal that you've gone too far. That's the I've gone too far buzzer. Now, last thing, and I have to talk to you about this, very important. I probably get this in every seminar some way, but it's one of the most important things we have to keep in front of us. What kind of thoughts do you have about yourself? <laughs> you know, we have to learn how to think like God thinks. So let me just leave you today with a few things that you need to think about yourself. All biblical. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Come on, stand up. We're going to stand up and say these things. I am forgiven. I want you to close your eyes and just drink these things in when you say it. Say, I am right with God. I am, I am forgiven. I am loved. I am powerful. Able. Justified. Redeemed. Redeemed. Restored. Restored. Blessed. Blessed. Creative. Creative. Complete. Complete. A new creature. A new creature. Dead, to sin. Dead to sin. Free from guilt. 
the home of God, changing for the better every day. I am bold. I am confident. I am wise. And I have the mind of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. All right, well, be blessed in the name of Jesus. Go in peace. Well, I believe that today's teaching has helped you understand how to meditate on God's Word. It is the key to knowing His perfect will for your life. You know, the Bible says in Joshua 1 and 8, that when we meditate on the Word of God, we have wisdom, we make better decisions, we deal wisely, and it brings prosperity and success into all areas of our life. But I know that I know that I know that the Word of God is true and that He changes lives and He gives you a life worth living. Misschien ken je Joyce Meyer van haar boeken of van haar programma Enjoying Everyday Life. Maar wist je dat Joyce Meyer Ministries ook overal ter wereld concrete humanitaire hulp biedt? Door middel van voedselverstrekking, ziekenhuizen, noodhulp bij rampen, het bevrijden van slachtoffers van mensenhandel en nog veel meer. Deze christelijke hulporganisatie heet Hand of Hope en draait volledig op giften. We do humanitarian works all over the world. You know, here we are in Haiti. I'm here in Thailand. Thessaloniki, Greece. In the back bush of Africa. On the Mekong River. In the city of Phnom Penh. Human trafficking, today's term for modern slavery. We've been working in different parts of the world and providing a, a place for women to come out of that lifestyle and be restored. It, it, there's no limit here. This is, this is ran by God. He changes lives in Project Hope. You can change, you can get healing, you can survive. This little girl at 10 years old escaped on her own from sex trafficking. She lives on the streets. She was rounded up by vans that travel around and steal these children. They were actually weighing the little girls so that they could ship them out of the country. And she was able to sneak away and escape. She ran to the tent that you see behind me where we feed the children and ask for safety. So we're able to feed Farisua here every day. We're able to grant her just a little bit of safety and to help her in any way that we can to tell her about Christ and just to love on her a whole bunch because she's an awesome little girl. Over Jezus vertellen en mensen laten zien dat God van ze houdt. Ja, de vele noden op de wereld gaan de mensen boven. En misschien vraag je jezelf af of je er überhaupt wel iets aan kunt doen. Maar dat kan dus wel degelijk. Hand of Hope, de christelijke hulporganisatie van Joyce Meyer Ministries, is daar het bewijs van. Alles in één keer oplossen gaat niet. Maar wij bieden mensen één voor één de helpende hand.